Let me start with one question. How many of you have got named customers? Let me see a show of hands. Any of you got named customers? Oh, okay. So like 50% of you can sleep for the next three <laughs> slides then. <laughs> About 50% of my customers are named customers. At one point, a guy approached me. He offered to take my named customers and cross-reference it with Facebook data. By that, he would be able to tell me the genders of my customers, and if I were lucky, depending on privacy settings, he would also be able to give me age of some of the customers. That, of course, came with a price tag. After all, it's Facebook data we're talking about. I didn't even know if it had any business value to me whatsoever. I didn't know whether my customers, male or female, were, would be behaving differently. So I started th to think about this. Not about having kids, obviously, but about names. In some countries, you can actually get a list from the government or download from a site. Um, a list of approved names, names that you are allowed to give your kids. In other countries, you are allowed to name them sort of everything you want. But still, in these countries, we do have websites and books that tell us all the names. So by pulling the names, I ended up with a list of names that match the country of my customers. So, from a list of names, actually two lists, one for the girls' names and one for the boys' names, I could just run it across my customer database and there, suddenly, I had genderized my customers. About 2% of my customers had unisex names, okay? I don't know if Kim or Jan is male or female. I can live with that. After all, I'm just looking for a pattern in my data. A couple of other percent actually misspelled their name. I don't know how that happens, but actually it does. Then I went on and made assumptions. I assumed that when I look at a customer per product area, what did he or she buy? If they bought rims or tires or spare parts, I assume you own a car. Because let's face it, it really isn't a Christmas gift kind of thing, right? So I assume you own a car. Certainly, I can do a chart, something like this, which tells me that gender does play a role. On Funan, it's more males buying spare parts than females. And in Aarhus, apparently the females are the one buying the spare parts. What's up with that? But this just shows you that actually, yes, gender did play a role. So there's a pattern here for me to actually look further into. I could also um, ask questions like, buy two, get one for free. Does that have a gender difference? Or how about basket size? So there's a lot of questions, a lot of patterns for me to look for. Of course, that's not enough. That's just names. So I turn to Bank of Statistics. A lot of countries do have Bank of Statistics, and in Europe, we are luckily enough that EU actually have this project collecting all of these data. So they're out there, still open data, free of, to use. They tell us about number of families per area, how many children, one, two, three or more, marital status, income level, whether or not people are employed, or percentage of people employed in this area, number of cars in household, or whether the cars are paid by the person itself or by a company, and a lot of other stuff. So, pulling this data looks something like this. The pink one is top 20% in this area, and the gray one is bottom 20%. Green, yellow, above average, in area, and across country. So this tells me something about my population. I then take all my sales figures, and I add them, divide them into the same areas, 
and just slash it on here. It looks something like this. That's a square, the right side of the slide. That's, that's our sales numbers. Right now, you see, they're all sort of it. So I, I'm showing you the ones that's really interesting here. Product area 20 is actually pink all the way down here. So this tells me that people in these areas who buy this product are singles. They're in the, area, in, in the region of top 20% of the entire population of singles. They're not married. Well, surprise, if you're single, you're not married. They're on social welfare or unemployed or other kind of support. So there are low-income people. And they buy my product. So now I suddenly know a lot about my customer. Not the customer, but customers in this area, this segment of customers. I can use that to ensure a fulfillment rate in this area, so these people buy this. I can also look up an area which have the same description, but somehow is not performing, performing in this product area. And maybe they need training or something like that. And I can show this to my, mic my marketing guys. That could also be of value for them. So that brings me to the next slide your home assignment. You didn't know this morning that you were going to get home assignment, but here it is. Does gender play a role if I added gender to this? I didn't, or at least I won't tell you the answer. So that's up to you to figure out. Do you believe gender plays a role as well? More data. As Rajan mentioned, I'm all about data. So, of course, more data. Open data can also be domain knowledge data. In this case, the domain of cars, the knowledge about cars. I can pull a data set that tells me the license plate, VIN number, the model the make of the car, which year it's made, brake system, which kind of fuel it uses, diesel, or whatever. And when I chart it, it looks like this. This is the roads in the Danish, the cars on the Danish roads right now. We've got a lot of old cars due to tax systems. It also tells us the story about 2009 and the financial crisis. People didn't really have the money to buy new cars. We could actually look into who did buy cars in 2009. That actually could be interesting as well. Going into detail here, there's actually a car called a pony. I find that sort of amusing. Look, honey, there's a pony on the road. I considered making a slide with a pony, like in a horse, equals, and then a pony like the car. But I'm not sure Hyundai would have found it amusing, so I skipped that part. This was data about the cars. I know which spare part fits which car. So again, I enrich, I enhance my internal data by adding these open data set. It gives me something like this. 246 ponies on the roads. <laughs> really, it is funny. 246 cars on the roads. I've got engines for engine size 1.5. I've got 110 items that fits this car. For engine size 1.3, I've got 81 spare parts fit. Some of these spare parts are the same. An oil filter for 1.5 is exactly the same as an oil filler for 1.3. So I need to sum this up and find my unique items. This has, adds up to 117 items. So I stock 117 spare parts. Question is, if it's turned into Jurassic Park in my warehouse, do I actually stock dead items? 
or as I call them, dinosaurs, no one will ever come look for these seven items because there's no cars on the road which actually needs these items. So it's dead stock value. Okay, it's only seven items. It can't be that much money we're talking about. But we're only talking about one model, one make of one car. So you try, do the math. Which stock value we could be talking about here. And I would never have been able to figure this out without open data. I would have had to wait until no one had been asking for this item for several years before actually reaching the conclusion that no one will come asking for it. Now I can just look at my data and see, well, no one owns the car. Of course, this also works the other way around. When something like this happens, Citroen, Peugeot, and Toyota made some sort of joint venture and made these triplets, three almost identical cars. I know they're even more identical than you might think, because I know which spare parts fits, and I can tell you there's a lot of similarities between those cars. So by knowing that, and by knowing how many cars were sold in 2012, 13, and 14, and by knowing from similar cars that by year three, they will need new brakes, and by year five, they will need, say, new battery. I'm able to actually stock up. So that's what triplets make you do if anyone actually had my triplets in here, I don't know. But that's what I'm able to do, again, only able to because I have these open data. To me, that is business value. That is an enrichment of my internal data by adding open data. So how about you? Question could be, are you going somewhere? Somewhere with your business, maybe? Different countries? There's a lot of statistics out there. There's a lot of data telling you which goods countries import. So if you're selling electrical goods and you're looking to go into Africa, actually, here's the data proving that then you should be looking about going into Nigeria because they have had a massive import for the last three years. They're free of charge. You don't even have to pay a consulting company. Or how about your own data, your own business, your supply chain, your stock value? One question could be, <clears throat> if you read newspaper and you see something like, people who work out six hours or more per week weigh less. Okay, what do that have to do with data? Well, the thing is, in order to make that news, they have to have some sort of statistics. Dig up that report, and you will find out that you, per area, actually knows people average weight in some intervals, maybe even age or something, but weight will do. So if you sell clothes, you will know where to ship small, where to ship medium, and where to ship large. Because in this area, really, there is no small people. So 50 pieces of clothes size small will do. And in this area, that's where all the small people live. No point in saying that, but that's where the small people live. So this is where you ship all your small, smalls, right? Now I need to know, is there any Canadians here? Because I really, I have a question for a Canadian guy. <laughs> I dug up these data. Oh, great. I really, I do have a question. I dug up these data. See? Apparently in Canada, they've got pickup schedules, weekly pickup schedules for Christmas trees 
So apparently, they celebrate Christmas 52 times a year. I like that idea. It's a bit expensive, but I like it. I don't know about you. So by that, I actually would like to encourage you to go find open data. Enrich, enhance your own business by it. There's a lot of value for you. Thank you.